As of February 14th, 2024, the game has been out for over a year. Things in the past has decreased player count, one of them being the One Punch Man collab. Com to us has made a ton of adjustments to improve the game. I commend you, Com to us. I truly feel this game is still one of the best mobile cross-platform MMOs on the market. Five summoners to choose from, another one coming at the end of this year. But today's video is going to be a video on how to fix the game. Implement some or even the majority of these things. You'll make the current player base happy, they'll invite their friends, and you'll get returning players and new players. So please, come to us, watch this video, and honestly, I'd be surprised if you watched it, because Chronicles is Sky Arena's red-headed stepchild, especially North America servers. But anyone else who's watching this, as you watch the video, comment below, tell me your thoughts, and as always, if you end up liking this video, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell ding ding of things so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. First and foremost, fix the monster AI. Classes need to do what they're supposed to do. Elements need to do what they're supposed to do. Have monsters use their skills like they don't have the intelligence of a two-year-old. Wusa is a great example. His second skill casts a shield and immunity. His first skill casts heal over time, and if they have a shield, it'll cast another heal over time. The AI really likes to use his first skill first and then his second. It doesn't make sense. Make your monsters smarter, or let us be able to choose what skill that they use as AI initially at the start of the battle first. A little box with a check mark here will do. Second, this goes for summoners and monsters. Prioritize targets better. Each class has a specific role in what they're supposed to do. Knights typically do what they're supposed to do. Warriors, it says attacks, assassins, and melee first. I've seen this multiple times that this is not the case. Warriors should target assassins first, then knights and other warriors, then whatever's closer after that, whether it supports mages or archers. Then you code it easily by element. If you are a wind warrior, after the determination of class goes through, let's just say there's two assassins, one water and one wind. The wind warrior should run to the water assassin first. Then they should target either wind, dark, or light, whatever's closer. And fire element should be the last because, hey, fire beats wind. Why would wind go to a fire element? Also, big red circles that are on the ground, letting you know that there's about to be AoE damage. Every single class, except for knights, should move out of that circle. If not, again, they're acting like a two-year-old. Mages need bigger radiuses of skills. The speed of those skills should be increased, and they need to be doing it at a farther range than what they're at now. They have to be closer than supports. Sometimes they're practically standing on top of the knights. It doesn't make sense. Archers do their thing, they attack the closest unit, whether that's the knight front line, or if an assassin comes into your back line, archers will attack them. That's good. Assassins, yes, they target those ranged archers and mages, but they need the prioritize element. And not only that, if there's no archers or mages, they should be going for supports and then assassins, and lastly, knights. Knights should be the lowest threat at any given time for the AI of an assassin. Next is summoner balancing. Now, summoners and monsters should be somewhat equal in the class role that they play. Now, summoners should absolutely shine in their class, slightly over the monsters of that same class. But each role of the summoner should be filled in a team comp, whether that's summoner or monster. This mainly goes for Orbia, Saleta, and Heath, because they will truly never do as much damage as their equal class of a monster. Monsters will always outshine in DPS. Side note before I get into every summoner. Give us an attack speed stat and let us be able to build attack speed on our equipment. Alright, here we go. We're starting with Cleef. Remove defense percentage as a damage modifier from every single skill. He is a knight. He's not meant for damage. He's meant to protect your team. Let's make Cleef a real tank. Lower his damage, but give him more. As far as passives, 
Since we'll be lowering his damage, hey, let's make him more of a tank. Increase these protection shield stats to 15%. Also add immune to provoke. Not only that, all of Cleef's provokes in his skill should not be able to be resisted. Increase magic shield to 40%, hell resistance is broken anyway. Change enhance shield to always, not just when Cleef is below 50%. For confrontation, remove damage dealt up. Change it to chance to remove one beneficial effect per 10% rate. And for basic attacks only, chance to add 3 seconds to provoke. Keep the damage taken down. Change blessing of battlefield to level 2 crit res up. You're protecting your allies as a tank. Be a tank. His evasion skill. It should remove one application of root and apply a movement speed buff. Now for Kina. Make her like the majority of all supports in the game. Lowest damage. She should always sit at 8, 9, or 10 on the rankings of damage in the field. So you might say, hey, well, there's hybrid supports out there, right? Some can do damage, some can do healing. I'm aware. But if you want to make Cleef or Kina be able to do damage, I think it should be a whole nother skill tree that you're able to choose. Earnest Prayer Skill. Remove damage dealt up. Your monsters are doing a damage, okay? Increase Holy Hammer up to 10%. Because your monsters are doing a damage, okay? Change Belief to below 70%. Like I said, your monsters. Switch Accurate Enhance to Always. Let your monsters debuff. Now with her active skills, the problem is, is that every single skill, if you choose to, can put out damage. The new skills that they put out on Kina are the ones that it should be. No damage, just support. Remove the damage from her first skill on every single element. And on the second skill of every single element. If there's damage on the third skill, fine. Make her first skill like a single target buff or a single target heal. Or proc something depending on the energy level. Have her basic attack apply the damage over time that she has on some of her element skills. Only above a certain energy level. And this is single target, not AoE. But again, her second skills that have damage, take it off. Add something else like a cleanse or an AoE attack down. Make her a support. And again, her ultimate. When you ultimate, you're using it with your monster's soul link ultimate. Her ultimate does not need to do damage. How about maybe enhancing that soul link's monster damage or something? But the burst from her ultimate plus the monster's soul link, it's crazy. Not only that, but it's AoE. Get rid of the ultimate damage. Add an AoE buff strip or something. Or AoE block beneficial effect. Her evasion skill should give a self shield and a self cleanse of one harmful effect. Now on to Orbia. Orbia's damage is there. I will not ignore that fact. The debuffs are there. Not ignoring that either. There's not too much to change, but she still needs more. Her skills need to be faster. They need to have larger radiuses or wider radiuses. They need to stop knocking her back. And she needs to be able to do this at a farther range. Just like all mages. But bigger AoE radiuses, this is nothing. She's a mage. Mages are about burst damage. Big area of effect damage. Glass cannons. Final showdown, you should also add when attacking a boss or knight. Trick should be always 100%, no matter what her HP is. Berserk should be a lower cooldown, maybe 30 seconds. However, however, change the nullify of spell shield skill hit to 3. Let's get rid of this crap and give her something on her evasion skill. I think a level 1 self buff of damage dealt up and a 10% heal, just like Saletta. Her skills and mainly buff stripping. It shouldn't just remove one beneficial effect. I would say buff that to two or three, especially if it can hit multiple people. I honestly would change this light beam. Instead of it being a single beam hitting multiple enemies, I would rather have it hit one enemy, a light beam straight from the sky, and remove all his buffs, and change it to only be one time, not two consecutive times. Dark Galaxy, for example, I feel like this should be a huge radius, not just this small little ball galaxy that she has. Her basic attacks need something, probably splash damage because mages specialize in area of effect. Cleef has it. Or if that's not the case, heck, give her a debuff on her basic attack to increase the damage dealt up on that enemy. Now, Saletta. Saletta's in an okay place. However, she needs more buff removal. Some skills need to be faster or instant. For example, Dark Trap and also Wind Trap. 
I don't know how you're going to apply block beneficial effect if you don't even remove a buff. Make her true shot true. Increase the damage dealt up to 2%. Give her a reason to build precision. I'm not saying it's not a good reason to build precision on her because of her attack speed and everything, but we can't even build for attack speed and equipment. Make it worth it. And if we're going for the route for precision, attack speed, right? Water has the ability to do weak point damage on her basic. Now that's great and all, but every single other element you need to build crit rate. So what's the point? Just give her weak point on every single basic. And again, change light feet to always. She's an archer. She's supposed to be agile and accurate. All right, now my boy Heath. Now Heath is getting better. He still needs more. He's an assassin. He should be assassinating quickly. The best assassins in the game are attack speed based. Or they have some kind of gimmick on their basic attack where you want to build attack speed. Again, let us build attack speed on equipment. And let's give Heath some attack speed. And Shadow State increase his attack speed by level 2. And Shadow Art, 4 seconds of Shadow State at the beginning of the game is nothing. I don't mind that it lasts 4 seconds. Because manually you should be using your evasion skill then using your skills. But let's change the start of the battle to 10 seconds. So he can actually run to the back line before Shadow State runs out. And let's change this last stat to every 15 seconds during battle if the evasion skill is full. This is for auto challenge arena. Reason being is evasion skill charges every 15 seconds anyway. So in auto challenge arena, let's just make it somewhat like real manual brawl arena. And with shadow art, kind of like Heath, remove root when you use your invasion skill. Obviously, this doesn't work on auto challenge arena, but in brawl arena, we should be able to use the evasion skill to remove root. Change of mind, what I would like to add here is when you use a skill, you also get a movement speed buff of level one. Heath should not be able to be kited by Kina's, Orbius, and Saletta's all day long. Heath also needs something on his basic attack. I feel like the basic attack should have a chance to root. Come to us, you want us to build him with evasion? Well, let's make it worth it besides the water element. Per 10 evasion, at least increase the accuracy up to 5% per 10 and damage taken down to 2% instead of 1. At max, 100 evasion gives 50% accuracy and 20% damage taken down. For final strike, instead of having the damage dealt up with your ultimate when all skills are under cooldown, have it that damage dealt for the ultimate is increased if you're in shadow state. Increase storming shadow to level 5 skill acceleration and level 5 drain damage. In my opinion, every single element except for water should have a defense down. And not just on creatures. For everything. He's an assassin. He's meant to break through enemy lines. He's meant to break through enemy defenses. If not defense down, then at least some defense penetration. Dark Spiral Death Denial should just be a thing. You shouldn't need a critical hit for all three hits. Which if you build your heath right, yeah, it's probably easy. But then there's crit res down, all that stuff, right? Same thing for Light Cross and Unrevivable. He needs four or more buffs for it to work. Just make it a thing. Buff removal and win should be like two buffs, or to steal two buffs. But if you don't want to give him more buff removal or buff stealing, give him some more damage mitigation ignore. There's just too many ifs, blah blah blah, and then blah blah blah. And for the whole evasion thing and water element, I like it, but give his first skill some more damage based off of evasion. Like I said before, make evasion worth building. Third topic today, monster balancing. This can be a whole completely different video. I don't want to go into it too in depth. For one, invincibility needs some kind of debuff that goes on after you get an invincibility buff. Like a 45 second unremovable debuff where you can't get invincibility again. Hey, if it gets cast on you, decrease that debuff by 15 seconds. But the whole non-stop invincibility thing is just ridiculous. You could even say the same thing for shields, but I'll leave that alone. Skills on certain monsters need to be faster. Just throwing this out there out of my memory, like Copper for example, his skills are just slow as crap. Some skills need bigger radiuses, especially provokes. Fire Panda has a great provoke radius. More people need to be like him. But even mages, for example. Mages are known for big AoE effect. Increase the skill radiuses. We need more provoke tanks like Darien. Ones that have passives that AoE provokes. 
Or maybe passive is when allies get attacked, they have a chance to provoke that target. We need nerfs to Ophelia. Ophelia having the ability to put a level 6 burn by chance on all enemies because she cleanses two harmful effects from every ally. It's stupid. That's why she does so much damage. And lastly, Light Phoenix and Wind Phoenix. Come on. They do too much. For one, they get guaranteed crits. So you can build them with high attack, high crit damage, and tanky. If they were squishier, they'd be less of a problem. Remove the guaranteed crits from Wind and Light. But not only that, for Wind, get rid of remove all beneficial effects. Get rid of block beneficial effects. Light can keep remove all beneficial effects. Hey, it's a Light Nat 5. But get rid of defense down. Get rid of unrecoverable. Hell, they already ignored target's damage mitigation effect. These are just some of the monster balancing that needs to happen. It's been brought to your attention 2,576 times. Let's talk about PvP briefly. We need an option in the settings to be able to remove the field health bars and the field names. Because honestly, it's ridiculous. I can't see anything that's going on. Who am I attacking? Especially for Brawl Arena, please. That's where it matters. Battlefield, just close it down. Do what you did with Galagos and close it. Progressively give us rewards daily until you just figure out what to do. Battlefield sucks. It's boring. No one likes it. The people that play it, it's because it's a chore and they want the rewards from the shop. Shut it down. I'd rather this be like a special brawl arena. One time a week, maybe for two or three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and have a different kind of special element to it. Whether it's just four stars, whether it's just light and dark, whales come out to play there, whether it's just fire, wind, or water monsters, whatever the case is. But get rid of Battlefield. It sucks. Challenge Arena, I personally like how it is right now. Only if the AI gets fixed. If the AI gets fixed and some monster and summoner balancing occur, then Challenge Arena can be successful. And in regards to Brawl Arena and Challenge Arena, the health bar is at the top. If it's a stall match and the timer runs to zero, the health bar should not be determination of whether you win or lose. Only if there's equal amount of summoner monster ratio. Sure, go by the health bar then. But if you have one summoner and two monsters and the other team has one summoner and one monster, that should be a win. But overall, Brawl is probably the most fun in the game for PvP. Ignore my personal frustrations though of me pulling out my bald hair. Last but not least, all the last stuff I want to talk about real quickly, because I've brought up a lot of these things before. AI customization on the main screen. Come on. I want to make some of these buttons smaller. I want to move my monsters maybe to the bottom right or whatever, closer to my skills. Hey, you started strong with cues for dungeons and brawls or whatever, right? At least you can move those around now. Energy should be refreshing way faster timer. Not only that, we don't need a progressive crystal amount every time we refresh energy. It's stupid. If you want to keep it this slow, at least add mystical scrolls to our dance drop in these dungeons. Or even energy or path of growth tickets, whatever. Use Sky Arena as your template, your most successful game. Make more monsters more viable for PvE. Perna, Sigmaris, Marin, Ha, Argon, and Brandia. That's pretty much all you would need. No one else can compare. Yes, there will always be a best, but at least make them somewhat comparable. Let our accounts be unique. Give us some more channels for AFK farming. The new Galagos is the new Galagos. It is what it is. Ranked mode is for whales. The more light and dark nat fives you have, the higher ranked you're going to be. More monsters you have, the higher you are. Subjugation needs something. Why spend energy here? Seriously, guild raids need a lobby. How is this not a thing? Add more four star monsters. At least with every Nat 5 update, give us a Nat 4. Bring some debuffs that the Nat 4 family does not have. You got hundreds and hundreds of monsters in Sky Arena. Heath needs some bling. Baphomet needs better time slots. And not only that, can you show the location of him better? What if I want to go there early and just park? You can't click anywhere and see where Baphomet spawns. You just gotta know. Equipment needs pity success rates. 
We shouldn't have to repair it 207,000 times at a 7% success rate non-stop every single time. We need Sky Arena Rune Management. If I want to change a rune, I want to see what the total change is going to be. Not just like the difference in the stats. I want to see the whole change. And lastly, artifact combining. Grays should be 100%. Greens should be 75 Blues should be 50%. And you can keep purples at 10, that's fine. But that's it for today's video. Please, for the almighty love of Calm to Us, if you even see this video, you have a great base game. Make some tweaks, do some advertising, and this game can be just as successful as Sky Arena. If you end up liking this video, share it with your friends, show it to Calm to Us, and also sub, like, ding ding bell. See you in the next one. Peace.